Alright guys, welcome to Flavio Rihanna's MMA show. I'm your host Flavio Rihanna, brought to you by Four Corner Sports. USC Vegas 93 is officially in the books, and I gotta say, it's one of those cards where it didn't help out the situation at all. It Honestly, it could have just been, you know, a week that the UFC ended up skipping out. It was headlined by Tatsura Tyra versus Alex Perez, which was actually a good fight for as long as it lasted. Um, it was actually an important fight because that fight had a lot of implications. That was the first main event for Tetsuro Tyra. Alex Perez just finished coming off of a impressive knockout over Mateus Nicolau. Um, and that would have been, what, his third fight within maybe, what, what four months or something of that nature? Um, March. Yeah, give or take about, about like four months, yeah. Because the fight that he had against um, Muhammad uh, Makayev, right, was, I think, early March. So, yeah, it should be around that that, that frame. So, anyways, um, impressive run by Alex Perez. Um, fight ended up uh, ended up ending short. I think it was, it was second round, past the one-and-a-half mark. Uh Alex Perez, I felt like he won round one. He was piecing up Tyra. Tyra, I think, look, maybe got, like, the jitters at first. You know, first main event, first five-round fight in the UFC, um, facing somebody that has a, a hell of a lot of experience. And Alex Perez was just putting on the pressure, using the boxing. Um, and then Tyra, you know, just trying to absorb all that in, right? And in round two, you saw that the cobwebs, you know, got shaken off and he was off and going. And I felt that Tyra in round two was in doing a whole lot better than uh, Alex Perez, where he was able to use the grappling. He was able to use his striking. Yeah, Tyra looked like, you know, like a... You know, like a like a tomato because he was getting he was eating so many jabs, and for what I told myself after round one, I was like, if Tyra can't be doing all this type of uh, you know eating punches just because he's not gonna last all five rounds, and Alex Perez is is not somebody that likes to take fights to the scorecards, he likes to finish fights as soon as possible. Tyra ends up uh, jumping on the back of Alex Perez. Um, uses a body lock to, you know, backpack himself and hold himself right. Uh, Perez is trying to figure out how he should, he's trying to take off the body lock. And Tyra is just hanging off of him, just wailing punches, you know, leaning all the way back and, and like, trying to get, like, the perfect angle. And as he's doing all that, Tyra is also trying to use his body weight to fall back and, you know, have a better positioning of uh, Alex Perez. And unfortunately, we ended up seeing what's it called? Perez leg ended up giving out as a re result of the body weight of uh, Tessero Tyra, resulting to Alex Perez um, having to end the fight early because of an injury. And I don't think that they ended up announcing what was the injury. But it honestly, it looked like anything of an ACL or an MCL like rupture, and if that's the case, that really sucks for Alex Perez because the man has has had a long history of trying to get into the octagon, and whether it's fight cancellations on his end because of injuries, or he can't make weight, and or he had a bad weight cut, or um, something happens to the opponent um, in in a training camp where they had a they had a you know, scrapped the fight, and it was just unfortunate because it really seemed like Alex Perez was trying to be active this year, and I, and I think he did say that he wanted to be very active um, in 2024, but unfortunately, it's one of those situations where I think he's going to be out for the rest of the year. Um, it is June. Um, right now is June 18th, and I think that if we're lucky, we see him in the maybe... January, February of 2025, but I do not see uh, with the way that he was in pain and, and where it looked like the the injury occurred. It definitely seems like he's going to be out for a very long time. Um, as for Tessuro Tyra, I mean, this kind of sucks for him because I really thought that that uh, he was going to you know have a good showcase, but now this puts a damper on it. 
and this really puts a big damper on things so what's gonna happen next with Cesaro Tyra I feel like he should fight Mateus Nicolau I mean you want to boost up what's it called Cesaro Tyra to you know having like a highlight reel I mean Mateus Nicolau's chin is very chinny he got he gets cracked I mean we saw him get cracked by Brandon Royval with that that up you know that up knee motion um Alex Perez was able to drop him so yeah um we can, you know, put him there. I mean, Sasura Patara has power. He has good boxing. He has good uh, wrestling and stuff like that. He can really put the 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 hurt on uh, on uh, you know somebody like Matias Nicolau. But overall, honestly, this card um, UFC UFC Vegas ninety three. I gotta say, look, the ten o'clock start was not good at all. It was not good at all for somebody that lives on the East Coast. Um, there's no reason why I should be uh, staying up to one o'clock in the morning trying to watch this fight, this card actually. I mean, we the card started at it was supposed to start at seven. They ended up pushing it back to seven thirty, and instead of you know them starting it off initially at seven thirty, right? They're just doing like a whole bunch of analysis and breakdowns of of, of like people at the desk like Karen Bryant. So, like honestly like I don't really care for that type of stuff. I just want once you know, if they say that it starts at seven thirty, I want both fighters to be, you know, in the octagon or at least walking out to the um to the octagon by then. Alright? And that's one thing that was kind of really frustrating as a fan because uh, like look, I watch every card. I'll be honest. I watch every card. I'll cancel some Saturday plans to watch some of these things. Alright? Although maybe this should have been something that I, I could have just said, hey, you know what? I'll just watch it the next day. I do gamble on, on some of these cards, all right? I'll put small wagers, and then obviously stuff that I feel more confident, I'll put bigger wagers on. But, I mean, this card overall, you had Garrett Ornfield Orn versus Brady Highstand. That ended up winning a, a form of his bonus, right? Brady Highstand ended up winning by submission um, in the third round. Um, Cesaro Tyra ended up getting a performance bonus off of an injury win, which made no sense at all. You had people like Weston Wilson, who is god-awful, on this card, all right, and look, somehow he ended up getting um, he ended he ended up getting a submission victory um within like the first two minutes, and yet he didn't get a, a performance bonus. I'm trying to see see you give you the whole rundown of the card, and you tell me if this was worthy for anybody that lives on the East Coast. I mean, even if it was somebody on the West Coast too, because I know they have a three hour difference. Look, this this was the card. The card was started off by Josephine. Knutson versus Julia uh, Polastrari, right? I had a bet on, on uh, Knutson going by decision. All right, whatever. It doesn't matter. Minus 125. You know, that was cool. But that, that, that's the fight that ended up starting at 730. Then you had uh, Melchizedek Costa versus uh, Nerdine Becky, right? Which, come on, like, really? Weston Wilson versus Jekka Saragi? All right, and that, and honestly, uh, Sergey was was a big favorite, you know, big bump for him that he then ended up uh, cashing in. And I, I don't know if he's going to be fighting in the UFC anymore. Uh, Gabriel uh, Fernandez versus Carly Judice, which that one fight of the night. Honestly, Carly Judice should have been um, should have been awarded the win, but whatever, it, it is what it is. Nate Maynard versus Jimmy Flick, which honestly, uh, that fight. Vegas had it as, you know, a huge, um, the over-under was one and a half, right? And they really felt like that fight was going to end under one and a half rounds. And somehow that ended up making it to the judges' scorecards, which Nate Maines is a hoss, right? And Jimmy Flick is very chinny. Somehow that fight ended up getting to the judges' scorecard, which is crazy, all right? Adam Fugit, or I call him Adam Fugit, versus uh, Josh Quinlan, all right? As very decisiony as, as a fight as it gets, a Adam Fuckett doesn't really, you know, doesn't believe in in punching. All he wants to do is just throw kicks. And for somebody as hittable as Josh Quillen is, some he was able to survive and make it to the judges' scorecard. Asuma Omabayev versus uh, Ho um, Jose Johnson. Who Jose Johnson? I don't know how the hell he made flyweight, but for somebody that that is above six two, right? Or six foot, I'm sorry. 
making flyweight is ridiculous. And this guy ended up fighting at lightweight, you know, early in his career. Why are you, why are you, you know, going all the way down? Man can't stop a takedown. And then on by of, you know, which I thought he was going to be able to get, get him out of there. Good on Jose Johnson for surviving. But, man, that was another decision. Um, that was another fight that goes to the decision. And then, like I said, Brady Highstand, he ended up uh, facing... He ended up facing Greg Arnfield. That fight ended in the third round. Lucas Almeida versus uh, Timmy Kuamba. Another uh, fight that goes to the decision. Same thing with Miles John versus uh, Douglas Silva, Deion Josh. And that was actually the co event. That is un- that is a very unlikely co event as I ever heard it. Because I'll tell you what. Miles John has no reasons whatsoever to be in a co event. Neither neither does Douglas Silva, Deion Josh. And I understand that we lost Ikram Alaskarov, but man, how bad this car this car needed Ikram Alaskarov because this was terrible. This was a terrible card. All right, seven thirty starts time. All right, un- unofficially. All right, fight doesn't end until like one ten. All right, and that's just only that's only because, or I'm sorry, like one o five, one o one o three. That that's only because of an injury. It is un- It is ridiculous how. How much we are going in, into with these Apex cards, all right? If you're gonna put it for a ten a ten p.m. start time, right? You better be having something like Macy Barber versus Rose Amayunas, which that's actually gonna be a main event for um for UFC Denver on July 13th. So it's really ridiculous that we're getting these low level type of fights, and they're starting super late. I don't mind Apex cards. But this was kind of pushing it right now. And it makes you really consider how the hell do we have UFC Louisville, all right? And it, that was headlined by Nasty Imbaba versus, versus uh, uh, what's the dude's face? Uh, Jared Cannonier. And yet we, we go to this. You know, this is borderline a Dana White Consent Series fight card. This is ridiculous. This is ridiculous. And I really do feel like, you know, fans are getting more adamant. Uh, like they don't want to see any any more Apex cards, and this should be the reason why. So I don't know if you guys in the comment section below, do you guys want to see more Apex cards, or do you guys want to see them go more on the road? Because I personally feel when they go on the road, they ended up putting on better fight cards just because they know that they need fans to be, to be in attendance. And yet the UFC is on fire right now, and I know that fans will pretty much buy and try to sell out any UFC card. But that's also because of the fact that the UFC is not going to just put out you know, cards like this on the road, because I'm pretty sure that's not going to sell. But until then, guys, that's what all I wanted to talk about. Are you tired of UFC Apex cards? And was was Tasuro Tyra, is he going to be able to... Who do you have next for Tasuro Tyra? I have Matias Nicolau. I want to see who you guys have next for Tasuro Tyra. And good luck to you, Alex Perez. Until then, guys, I am Flavio Rihanna, and I will see you guys next time. Peace, guys.